Spear guns are a bit of an acquired taste. You really gotta get to know them in order to understand their full capabilities. And today we're gonna check out the highest mastery lockout spear gun, and that is the Ferox at mastery rank 14. Hey guys, hello and welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar, and today we're gonna be diving deeper into this primary weapon. As always, I'm gonna be having a cheap build, something affordable that anybody can build, but of course we also have the classic end game setup with a ribbon. That being said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides follow a new player friendly approach, simply because there's a lot of info here and I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. But I understand that you also might be a veteran and not interested in all this new player business. You're invited to skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Ferox. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon behaves without any mods equipped, and for that I'm gonna need a couple of guinea pigs. The Ferox features two fire modes. First of all, your primary fire mode is charge based, however you cannot release a 50% charge or a free quarters shot. The weapon needs to be charged to the full 100% then it will automatically discharge. Now that is a bit of a pain because you cannot hold the charge in like you would in the case of the Lanka. The good news is that the primary fire is hit scan. The secondary fire does what all of these spear guns do, you simply chuck your spear at a group of enemies or whatever you want and it does have a bit of an effect, as you can see all the enemies within a 5 meter radius got pulled in to the ferox. Every 5 seconds the weapon will release an AOE pulse which will deal 150 electric damage. Of course this is the unmodded value, you can further augment this. And there's a lot of use to something like this, for example you can clump everybody together like so, then you can go in melee style. But there's another option, you can simply make a throne out of Grenier and let them carry you around town so everybody can bask in your awesomeness. Now the secondary fire also has a bit of a charge to it, but it only affects the arc, the travel of the ferox, it doesn't do anything for the damage itself. For example, if I just click it like so, it kind of falls to the ground really quickly, but for more straight shots you want to put in some momentum, some more force, so you want to charge it fully and as you can see it will travel a bit more straight. But the range doesn't get uh, modified, still 50 meters and still the same damage. Keep in mind that this being a spear weapon, if you chuck it off a cliff or something like that, it will take 20 seconds before the weapon returns to you, or if you put it on the ground like so. And no, it doesn't deal any damage to you either. And well, that's pretty much it, let's jump into stats to see precisely what we're dealing with. Mod capacity is 60 out of 60 and if your ferox only has 30 out of 30 then jump into actions and install an auto king catalyst. The catalyst can be found from alerts, invasions or if you're lucky from the daily sortie. By MR14 you should have access to the daily sortie but if you don't just yet remember to complete the main storyline of the game. Next, my weapon has been formatted a total of 6 times, but this was done only for the purpose of testing. For the weapon belts I'm recommending you guys you can get away with 4. Accuracy for the Ferox both for primary and secondary is 16.7, now if I slap on heavy caliber that goes to shh. So I do not recommend heavy caliber, not at all on the Ferox. Charge rate by default is 0.5 with a critical chance of 32% and that is absolutely bloody awesome and the multiplier is outstanding as well at 2.0x. Fire rate of 1.33 but again it is a half a second charge time with a magazine of 10 and a punch through by default of 1.5 meters. Now that is awesome, if punch through would function the way it's supposed to function that would be absolutely glorious, however it doesn't, link in the cards now so you can see a demonstration on how punch through currently functions in Warframe. Reload of 1.8, now that's not terrible because as you will see the Ferox does carry quite a bit of a punch to it, so I'm not really bothered by the magazine or the reload, however if you find this a bit too long, a bit of reload speed doesn't really hurt. Riven disposition 3 out of 5 which means that the Ferox will have decent Rivens, nothing too outstanding, keep in mind that the Riven Dispo is tied into the weapon's popularity, but as far as I know they haven't really updated it in like a year or so, something like that. Status chance for primary fire is only 10%, so as you can see this one is made to deal a whole bunch of damage with a single shot. Take a look at the default damage, take a look at the numbers here, it's over 300, what is that, 350, something like that. And the highest amount by far is going to be puncture, 245. Puncture currently in Warframe is one of the best physical types, simply because it deals extra damage to heavily armored targets. And to be honest with you guys, heavily armored targets are the only ones we kinda really bother with because everything else 
dies a lot smoother. If we take a look at the uh, secondary fire or the throne, to be honest, you're only gonna really use this for the utility. You're not really gonna use it for the damage it deals, unless you're doing low le lower level content. As you can see, the damage is a lot higher, but again, the usability is simply not here. I only recommend using this one for the gimmick, if nothing else. Let's start slapping on some mods, starting with mandatory mod serration, 165% extra damage, and we're gonna give Heavy Caliber a solid skip. Next we're gonna go into multi-shot and we're gonna be applying split chamber with 90% multi-shot as well as vigilante armaments with 60% multi-shot totaling 150%. You'll notice that the Ferox kinda acts like a scopeless sniper and this is pretty much how we're gonna treat it. We're gonna go to crit chance and crit damage next because again this is the weapon's primary strength. Point strike 150% crit chance, take a look at this, this is just glorious 80 percent crit chance with point strike alone and if i add vital sense my multiplier goes to 6.2 and it's pretty clear this is a crit weapon from this point onwards you really gotta decide exactly what you want to do with the weapon because you can make a slash build with hunter mumu if you so desire or you can make up a straight elemental build usually i prefer elemental builds but that's not to say that the uh, slash builds aren't great they're absolutely bloody fantastic i'm gonna show you guys both and you get to choose whatever you prefer First, an elemental setup. An elemental damage should always be applied on a weapon depending on circumstances. Where are you going, who are you fighting, and what exactly are they vulnerable to? For example, if you're going up against the infested, there's a lot of them, but they're pretty weak. So I would recommend AoE weapons heavily modded into heat. For example, the Ignis Wraith. If you're going up against the Corpus faction, they have big shields, and if you really want to nuke down shields, then build magnetic damage. But a smarter idea would be to build gas or toxin as it bypasses their shields entirely and deals damage to their health. Just keep in mind that underneath those shields sometimes you might meet alloy armor and in that case building radiation is not a bad idea. Against Grenier, what you should build from my point of view is Corrosive damage. Corrosive has a damage bonus of 75% against Ferrite armor. On Grenier, however, you don't always find Ferrite armor. You also find Alloy armor. And Alloy, as we talked earlier, is weak to radiation damage. However, the proc from Corrosive still makes it the best choice when it comes to fighting Grenier. And that's what I'm recommending to you guys. Corrosive is the elemental combo between electricity and toxin. Should we go for the 60-60 mods or the dual stat mods or should we go for the 90 mods? Once again, we are treating the Ferox as a scopeless sniper. You're simply not firing that many shots, so you're not gonna get a whole lot of corrosive procs on the target. We're gonna go for the 90 mods. The elemental combo that provides really good results with few applications is viral, but more on that a tad later. Electricity with Stormbringer. Next, we're gonna go to Toxin infected clip. Now I got my elemental combo and take a look at the value 4172 with all the damage I slapped on and of course the multi shot as well. We still have one more mod slot left on the weapon and this is what I like to call the option slot. Cater each and every weapon to your own individual playstyle. If I had Prime Shred I would definitely go for it because that one gives you 55% fire rate and 2.2 meters worth of punch. It's a tremendous mod if you have that one by all means slap it on and forget about it. Now you might be tempted to say that listen the weapon already has 1.5 meters worth of punch through. do I really need more? If you clicked on the link that I recommended to you guys to see how punch through currently works you would know that 1.5 meters is simply not enough sometimes so going for a bit more will prove worthwhile. The only problem that I take with the Ferox is the charge time. It's the only thing that's kind of keeping me back from using the weapon a bit more consistently. So let's explore some fire rate options. But take a look here, 0 0.38 with only 30% fire rate. More fire rate options. Speed trigger, solid choice, you can never really go wrong with this one. 60% fire rate. And what's the difference from 0 0.38 to 0 0.31? Now that's definitely not a big difference. My recommendation to you guys will be Vile Acceleration. This is 90% fire rate, but at the cost of 15% damage. This is a corrupted mod, and if you don't know how to farm corrupted mods just yet, link in the cards now, easy mode way to farm it. It's really no big deal. And you shouldn't pay more than 10 plat for this one. That 15%, it takes away, keep in mind that it's like a serration minus 15%, it's not a multiplicative after effect, so honestly, it's not that big of a deal. 
And we're gonna be testing the weapon out like this. Again, I do need my fire rate, otherwise the weapon is simply so unbearable to use. Level 120, Corrupted Heavy Gunner, and we're gonna go to town without using the punch rule on the weapon just yet. So as you can see, the weapon can pack one serious punch. I'm trying not to use the punch rule, so it's a fair test. I'm even getting some corrosive apps, even though I didn't went for the 60-60 mods. It takes about 6 shots to kill one of these high-level targets. The orange crits that you see, those are crit ups from Vigilante Armaments. Let's keep in mind that we do have that set bonus. It's a lot more potent when you're firing a whole lot more bullets or projectiles at a target, but as you can see, when it does pop, it does make quite a bit of a difference. And you also probably notice another thing, if the Ferox crits, then the Ferox hurts. If it doesn't crit, look at that, 900 damage, that's pathetic, but 14,000 on a crit, so what you want from this weapon is more crit. You guys got Argon Scope, then slap it on in your option slot, maybe with fire rate as well, sacrifice something else and forget about it. Again, you do want crits out of this weapon if you want it to hurt. Now that is a way you can go with the Ferox and this is usually my kind of style of build. I prefer elemental setups, but you can also go for uh, a slash build through the use of Hunter Munitions. Now let's slap on our mandatory mods, Serration, Split Chamber, Crit Chance and Crit Damage of course, with Point Strike and Vital Sense and we're also going to be using Vigilante Armaments. This one is not entirely mandatory, definitely not, but keep in mind that 60% multi shot is simply very good on the Ferox, again it does help uh, in getting more shots on the target. 150% multi shot between Split Chamber and Vigilante Armaments means a guaranteed second bullet with each and every shot and a 50% chance at a third one. With Split Chamber alone, you got a 10% chance at firing a single bullet per shot and when it does happen, it's simply underwhelming. Multi-shot currently in Warframe is probably one of the best stats, if not the best. Again, it depends on the weapon and we're not gonna go into that whole discussion. Back to our slash build, Hunter Munitions is the mod that is gonna make it happen. 30% chance to apply a slash status to an enemy on critical hits and of course we do have a high critical chance. What we don't have is a whole lot of bullets on the target, so we'll see exactly how this one works. When you're building a weapon for Slash, it's a smart idea to build Viral Damage, because Viral Damage on a status proc will reduce the maximum health of a target to 50% for the duration of the Viral Effect. Just keep in mind that the status chance of the Ferox is not really all that great. You can work something like use the Alternative Fire, then use the Primary Fire, but that's a little bit too roundabout in a game as speedy as Warframe that simply takes too long. So let's build some viral damage, shall we? Which is the elemental combo between cold and toxin. I'm actually gonna go for the 90 mod. Stop screaming at me, you're gonna see why in a second. So, rhyme rounds and the toxin mod is called malignant force. I went for these two just to get some status chance. Again, I'm simply not putting a whole lot of bullets into the target. And you will see that even with the 60-60 mods, I'm still having trouble in getting consistent virals on the target. Now let's test the weapon out like this, this is just the first variation of the slash build, I got more for you guys. Same targets as before of course. I don't have my fire rate so that's a bit of a pain. There we go, slash on the target, look at the value of those slashes, 8000, no viral app as you can see, but the slashes are absolutely murdering the target, there's the slash. 7991 that is absolutely glorious more slash on the target still no viral and still no viral see this is the problem with a weapon such as this i don't recommend you try going for a viral approach because it is not consistent when it does happen like now i don't have my slash but it does have viral there we go viral and slash when the two happen it's absolutely bloody glorious the problem is the consistency of both the applications you're looking for you want slash and you want viral at the same time as you can see most of the most of the time the target will bleed out without having a, a viral proc on it one more time two no slash damn it again very few projectiles so there we go slash and viral now that is absolutely awesome and the target of course is going to bleed out now, since we're not getting a whole lot of viral apps, why don't we drop it all together and go for more raw power? You guys want more raw power, don't you? So we're gonna drop these two and we're gonna go for more crit chance and crit damage. And this is where things kinda get expensive. I'm sorry about that, but Argon Scope 200 plat currently on PC. Sorry. 135% crit chance when aiming for 9 seconds. That means guaranteed crit out of the Ferox for the primary fire at least. So with each and every bullet that lands on the target, I'm gonna be getting that 30% chance from Hunter Munitions. And we're also gonna be adding bladed rounds. Now with the 
But from bladed rounds my crit multi goes to 9.6 9.8 something like that which is absolutely hilarious keep in mind that my crit chance is guaranteed because of argon scope so a build such as this at least on paper should be able to deal quite a bit of damage so let's test it out and see if it actually packs a punch same targets as before now i'm gonna have to get the buff from bladed rounds in order to, uh, in order for the build to be in full swing there we go we got a kill now bladed rounds with argon scope in full glory 24 thousand bleed on the target now that is definitely impressive the only problem with the weapon is can you bypass its clunkiness can you bypass the whole fact that it's kind of charged and there might be a guy with an amprax or an ignis that is going to destroy everything before you even get the charge that is up to you you might be a solo player look at that free slashes multi-shot that is multi-shot in action right there and as you can see, a build such as this carries one hell of a punch. If you have access to Argon Scope, 100% go for it. Now, there's one more thing I want to show you guys, of course, a Riven setup. And this one, I think, was a gift from a friend and I did roll it eight times. I got critical damage and damage. Now, that's not exactly a perfect Riven. If you're looking for the perfect stats on a Ferox, look for critical chance, critical damage, damage, or multi-shot. I would go multi-shot over damage. In this case, as a negative, whatever is harmless. So damage to infested, zoom, etc etc and this is an elemental set setup because again this is simply the type of build i prefer but something like this of course can be adapted to hunter mumu as well so one more test same targets as before i got my guaranteed crit chance however with argon scope i did keep that look at that one shot two shot guaranteed damage i'm no longer relying on getting a slash on the target as you can see it does happen fairly consistently but when it doesn't happen it simply ticks me off again this is personal preference for the most part the damage it can deal with a riven is quite impressive while the riven dispo free is not exactly amazing it's not bad either and it's still worth getting a riven for the ferox especially considering that they're not overly expensive you can get an unrolled one for something like 30 plat 40 plat on the maximum and when it comes to good ribbons of course these can cost extremely much but my recommendation is head on over to kuva and test your luck and that's pretty much performance with a riven now let's amp up everything with warframe buffs and for that i'm gonna need my favorite weapon specialist lady mirage prime and let's check out what kind of buffs she's got Rifle Amp, 27% extra damage to the Ferox, this is an aura, so everybody in your party will be receiving this benefit, and it is stackable times 4. If you wanna pump up the value of Rifle Amp, the damage bonus you get, you can use something like Coaction Drift. Honestly, I don't really recommend sacrificing an aura and another mod slot in order to get a bit more damage out of your weapon, because the values these offer aren't really all that great. However, Arcanes are a lot more impactful. Arcane Rage on headshot, 10% chance for plus 120% damage to rifles for 16 seconds and the usual plus 1 Arcane Revive. This one is farmable from the third Eidolon down on Cetus. I believe the R3 currently on PC goes for about 100 plat, 100-ish, something like that. As for your second choice, you can go for something like Avenger, but considering the crit chance on the Ferox is not really worth it. What I recommend to you guys, of course, is going to be Arcane Acceleration Fire Rate, so you no longer have to mod for it. You can simply live with a 60% fire rate that our acceleration will give you. It's on critical hit, and we do loads of critical hits. And of course, we're going to be testing the weapon out like this. As for the conclusions for the weapon, I think it's pretty clear. It packs one hell of a punch, but it does come at the cost of usability. If you are not bothered by the charge time on this weapon, if you're okay using fire rate mods, utility mods, and don't just go for straight damage, then you're gonna be just fine with the Ferox. As you can see, the damage is absolutely bloody hilarious. As always, my name is Ben Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. If you have any feedback for me or would like to request a specific weapon review, then by all means, leave it in the comment section down below. I can't realistically promise you that it will be done by next time or even within a week because these reviews do take quite a bit of time. But I will be reading through each and every comment. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. Until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.